As Child Protection Actors in humanitarian settings, we need to remember that community members have a deep understanding of protection risks. Children, families and community members are often best placed to implement actions that support children's protection and well-being. Child Protection Actors usually understand community work as a predefined set of steps and activities. These are generally designed, resourced and implemented by child protection actors with little input from community members. Research has shown that interventions driven primarily by child protection actors can weaken existing community efforts to protect children. And they are often not sustainable. Let's return to Nina and her community's efforts to keep children safe. Nina has seen different NGO staff coming into her community, creating safe spaces for children to play and learn. They have hired facilitators who receive a small stipend. One day, a man from the safe space organizes a game on the football pitch where Nina and her friends are playing. He invites Nina and other children to join him. Nina is upset. Doesn't the facilitator know that this is where they play football? She's worried the children on her teams won't come back. Nina wishes she could be part of the group of facilitators. Maybe then she could suggest games that children like to play in their community, as well as the materials that should be used. While there is no right or wrong way to work with communities, certain approaches are more successful at building trust between community members and child protection actors. This promotes community ownership and sustainability. An interagency study called What Are We Learning About Protecting Children in the Community? found that most community work falls into four different approaches. The first approach is direct implementation by child protection actors where government, community members, families and children do not participate in the design or implementation of the action. This approach might be needed in the first phase of an emergency, for example, to save lives or to reunite children with their families. The second approach is community involvement in agency-led initiatives, where community members are trained and supported to carry out specific activities designed by child protection actors. Examples of this approach are the safe space facilitators and games organized by NGO workers in Nina's community. The third approach is community-owned and managed activities mobilized by child protection actors. In this approach, the agency supports community members to analyze their own situation, identify priorities, and develop actions to address their concerns. In the fourth approach, activities to protect children are initiated and driven by community members. The community owns the whole process, while child protection actors play a supportive role as requested. Nina's football club falls under this fourth approach. It was initiated and owned by Nina and her friends. By providing Nina with the resources she needs, child protection actors can strengthen and support her work. This creates greater impact and supports community ownership. Now, take a moment to think of a community where you or your agency has been implementing child protection programming. Which of the four approaches did you utilize? Did you enter the community with a predetermined plan, activities and indicators? Or did you first learn about existing practices, structures, norms and values before intervening? Remember, there is no one-size-fits-all model for working with communities. The goal is to trigger reflection on your current engagement and to offer opportunities to nurture stronger community ownership. With the information shared in Standard 17 and a new resource, the Reflective Field Guide Community Level Approaches to Child Protection in Humanitarian Action, introduced in this video series, you can start thinking about more sustainable and effective approaches for your specific context. By building on the capacities and resources existing within communities and among families, child protection actors can provide better support where it's needed most.